folks, welcome to another video in our series on how to play Nothing Personal. In this I'm going to talk about the last three phases of the game, the fence, the feds, and the families of each round. In the fence phase, everyone is going to draw more influence cards. You always get two influence cards. But we also will look to see how many gangsters you control at this point in time. If you control two or more gangsters, fine. You just get those two influence cards that we handed out. However, if you control only one gangster, we feel bad for you and give you three influence cards. If you control no gangsters, we scorn you, but you at least can get four influence cards. Ties do not count in this case. There's no breaking of ties because the kappa would break the tie to hurt the person behind. And that's not how this is going to work in this round. So everyone's going to get these. You can also buy more influence cards that cost $10 each. And you have to decide how many you're going to buy before you, before you take them. You can't take one and say, I don't like it, sell it for eight, and you know, then spend $2 to basically buy another card. So we're, no cheating the system like that. But you can buy more influence cards and get those ready for the next round. Then the feds show up. Now it's possible that someone controls somebody powerful and you say, how am I ever going to take them out? They have that many influence tokens on them. Well, the feds will arrest gangsters in this phase who have a certain number of influence on them. That influence number here is marked on the board. In a five player game, if there's 11 or more influence, a four player game, 10 or more, or a three player game, nine or more influence, if that happens, if a character breaks those rules, all the influence is returned and that character goes to prison. Now we have two different piles here for prison and for sleeping with the fishes or dead because unlike the Marvel Universe in this game when you're dead you stay dead but there are cards that can break people out of prison. So you go down and check all the different people starting from the top and going down and sending people to prison. Now this will likely leave holes in the organization. If the capo is gone for any reason, and he likely will be because you know it's powerful to control the capo, the highest position, in this case would be the enforcer, would move up to that spot. He's now the new capo. Then for each position after that, the underboss here, it says underneath it, it says appointed by the capo. So whoever controls the capo, in which this case it's orange, he has the capo ring, he'll decide who can come into this position. Unfortunately, there's only one person and that's Sam Healy who can move in that. Then he picks this one here is also appointed by the capo. This one here says appointed by the underboss. So whoever controls the underboss picks which of these two guys comes in. And you will continue to do this. The bean counter has an associate move in. More associates will move in here as picked by people. If you run out of people, <laughs> there's no more associates to bring in. You just bring in random gangsters from the top. Sometimes there's, everyone's dead. And then once everything is filled, you just refill any empty associate positions with new gangsters from the top of the pile and you go to the next round. That's the family. And so the way the game will work is you will take place, this will all happen over five rounds, five years. At the end of the fifth year only, after you fill all the jobs, you will do one more scoring where you will go over each person and score their respect only for whoever controls that person. Also, each $10 can be traded in for one respect each, and whoever has the most respect is the winner of the game.